So I got I had to go to night school. Mm. Hated that. O and C chemistry. Again, very badly taught. Mm. They knew their stuff, but it for me it wasn't delivered in the way that I could learn the chemistry. Um, so I thought, what shall I do? End of the year, they there wasn't a lot of work for us in asbestos mm. research. So I, I went back to school. I rang up school and Daisy Wood, who was deputy head at my grammar school, said, why don't you come back to school, Judith? I think you'd make a good teacher. And we've got a good relationship with Chester College and they really need science teachers. Right. So I went back to school at 17 for a year, faffed around doing a couple of A-levels right. and went to teach training college in Chester in, in um, September 1972. What was teacher training like in the back in 1972? Well, we didn't have loads of curriculum subjects. We had um, history of, history of um, education. Well, it, we, it, it had three strands. There was education, for me, science, mm. and professional, supplementary and professional studies. I went to do 93, 913 age range. Um, and we were, it was a PE wing college, so Chester College was an A-rated establishment for PE right. secondary. And that had quite a slant on living on the campus, which, which we did. I lived on campus for mm -hmm. two years. And it was all geared for the PE people. Um, but I, I was really lucky. There were only four of us who were doing the 9 to 13 science course. And I had a most fantastic chemistry teacher. I, d I had good physics teachers as well. But my chemistry teacher, called Tim Healy, was an ex-Oxford graduate mm. who'd already published some uh, theoretical stuff in chemistry and was highly regarded. And he was fantastic. As my, I couldn't have had a more enthusiastic um, science teacher who really mm. made the science come alive to me and mm. taught me in the way I needed to be taught with lots of practical work. Mm. Um, the other, because you're going to ask me about mentors, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tim was one of my mentors. But in our 9 to 13 group, there were about 16 of us in a, I suppose it was a tutor group. Mm. And our tutor group had Ken Bryan, who was a history, history teacher from a working class background history graduate turned sociologist. Mm. He, so he, he was somebody who sat at the front and challenged us and asked us questions and wasn't content with somebody sitting at the back and not contributing to the discussion. You know, he didn't have all the answers, but we had fantastic discussions. Mm. Another um, guy who was significant was called Bob Taylor. Bob Taylor was a psychologist uh, who'd been a teacher first. And he taught me that answering a question of a child is not necessarily the right thing to do immediately, you know. Um, and he would never answer any bad questions. And he sent us away and to find out the answers for ourselves. Mm. And that's, that was really significant for me. And so when you, uh, what was your first job as a teacher? Well, I was trained for the 9 to 13 yeah. age range. And I did my teaching practices in middle school. Yes. But... When, as I was coming out of college, middle schools were closing. They were reverting back to primaries. And in Cheshire and Clwyd, there were one or two middle schools that kept going, but the majority didn't really want. It was, it, there was a big focus on English and maths, yes. as there is now. And they didn't want a primary scientist. And so I didn't have a job until around about the 10th of July. Mm. But there was a guy who who seemed to have his finger on the pulse about how people were in terms of getting jobs. And I remember this guy who, who I couldn't, can't remember his name, but he said, Judith, I think there's a job for you at Bromborough Secondary Modern School. He said, it's a fantastic school. I said, I, I'm not trained for secondary, I'm a, I'm a primary person. And he said, I think you'd really like it there. So um, I trotted off mm. to, to Bromborough Sec for for the sympathies. 
Um, you know, I said I'm I'm not uh, I'm not trained for secondary, and they said, well, we'd like you to take the job. So I, I was I was spent a year there. The reason was for the vacancy was because the head of science called Les Maxim went back to Chester College to do a full time degree because prior to that, obviously, it wasn't we weren't um, an all degree profession. Yeah. So the majority of people coming, if not all people coming out of teacher training in those days, right. didn't have um, a degree. They'd only got the yeah. cert -ed. So Les Maxim, who was head of science in this um, secondary modern in, in Frommera, mm -hmm. Frommera um, went back to the college and I had his job for a year. Right. And that meant I had to teach the physics to the exam the exam groups and I had to uh, teach the general science to the fifth years who were doing general science. That was fascinating. I loved it. Uh, but also I, I had the tutor group because they knew I was fond of younger ones. They gave me a tutor work group in year one, yes. which we now I suppose year seven. And I, I had a fantastic time. The lovely thing about it was that they let me teach science in the way that I wanted to teach it. They didn't say, you've got to do it like this, Judith. But I remember myself, you know, at the band of machines. So, so the practical ways of, of, do, of, of doing it were, were, were highly applicable, apart from the, uh, the, uh, the hundreds of worksheets from the band of machines. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, but, but the hundreds of worksheets from the band of machines actually allowed me to... to Differentiate it. Yeah. yeah, but I also, I used to do a lot of class teaching, a lot of demonstrations. This is how I want you to, you know, mm. experiment to prove, yeah. you know, and worksheets to, to fill in rather yeah. than having to write up. Right. Um, quite amazing, really, mm. what, what they allowed me to do. And Les used to pop back occasionally mm. to see how things were going. So the, this that guy went back to from the sec mm. after I, I had to get out because well they wanted to keep me but love authorities worked slowly in those days mm. and I got a job which I'll tell you about in a minute yeah but he um, he went back um, he used to call me Wonder Woman when he used to come back and see what I was doing with oh. him. and he used to say you know I would never have thought of doing doing it like that you know he, he yeah. was really fantastic but he went from Brombrosec to Woodchurch Combined, which was a massive, uh, on the Woodchurch estate in Birkenhead. Mm -hmm. um, he went to be, I think, first head of science. But ultimately, he became one of the chief people in the local authority. Yes. Uh, I don't know if he was even the director of education for Wirral mm -hmm. later on. Um, so you're quite right that he was given space to do what he needed to do. And he was absolutely amazing. He was one of my mentors. So, the, so the, uh, do you think it was the primary training or the primary background uh, which which helped you in, in, in dealing with, uh, with with the learning needs that you find uh, would find in the secondary model? Absolutely, because I I trained for the nine to thirteen age range. I did my um, my practices in middle schools, yeah. and so the middle schools then there were two kinds. There were the nine to thirteen or the eight to twelve, and they were very different. Mm. The 9 to 13 were more secondary organised, yes. with a little look for primary, and the, um, and the 8 to 12s were more primary. And I suppose being 9 to 13 and practising with 8 year olds and 13 year olds, I, still, I suppose I was developing my own teaching style. It didn't go down well, I, I never really had a fabulous, no that's not true, my first practice the, one of the class teachers complained to my um, supervising tutor that I went into a lesson totally unprepared. Mm. And Joan Royal, just remember their name, Joan Royal said, I just don't believe that. Judith would never be unprepared. Um, I think it was because I was working in a different way and she didn't like it. Mm. Mm. But I didn't go in there to do what they expected me to do, in my view. I went in there to practice Right. developing my yeah. my teaching style. And I've never had problems with children, ever. Mm. But I've, I've often had problems with 
other people's perceptions of what I should yeah, be doing, yes. which didn't match up. So that comes on to some of the uh, early challenges uh, in your career as a, as a teacher. Brummer Sec wasn't, wasn't easy. Mm. Um, Brummer was probably slightly better than Ducks by Birkenhead. But right, so what motivated you to continue and progress? Oh, no, never any question that I wouldn't progress. Mm. At the end of the year, um, they, wanted, they wanted to keep me. Uh, they couldn't offer me a contract. Mm. So I saw a job at advertising Fluid, mm. over the, just over the borders in yes. Chester, as head of uh, lower school science in a comprehensive school. Mm. Um, that was amazing. It was a developing um, school, so there was every year they were increasing another year. So it was a new oh, school. Oh, so a growing. It was growing, a growing yeah. comprehensive school. Yeah. I've forgotten the number. But um, they wanted, the head of science wanted somebody to look after the, young, the younger ones because he wasn't terribly good at that. Mm. And so I went for my interview. Fifteen governors. Crikey. Well, fifteen on the interview panel. Mm. Six applicants included, all of them were Welsh, all of them were well-qualified scientists. And there was me, not really a proper secondary teacher. Mm. And um, they gave me the job, head of law school science in a comprehensive school after one year of teaching. And when I got the phone call, just after I got home, I just couldn't believe it. Mm. Totally amazed. Right, so that, that was a, a, a big push to your confidence, or a, bit, a big fillip to your confidence as a teacher. Absolutely. But the amazing thing about the school, and Terry Gibson, who was the head of science, was that um, Clued at that time had got this idea about personalised learning in, in science. Mm. I don't know if you heard about that, but they were into individual worksheets, workbooks. Mm. And the years three to five had study guides that mm. Terry Gibson wrote for them. Mm. And the years one and two, so seven and eight, they'd been there, yeah. um, had little topic books that I used to write for them. There were some in existence, mm. but because it was developing, mm. I was able to write some of these mm. these things. So I had my um, my classes would come in, and I taught a lot of first, second, and third years. Mm. And Terry Gibson took a lot of years three, four, and five because he was better to be fair. Mm. And um, that was quite. It was it was really great for me. I loved the topic books. I loved the fact that children worked through at their own pace. Yes. And they had trays of equipment. So when it, when they got to a practical piece of work, they got the tray out. And if somebody else happened to be at the same place, they'd work together on it. Oh right. So there was opportunities for. Uh, there was, but I'm not sure whether it was supposed to work like that. But <laughs> but it, it wasn't meant to be like that. It was meant yeah. to be me helping them alongside. Mm -hmm. But my, my class would just come in, get their topic books out, start, mm. no fuss, no, no starter, no. Mm. I sometimes, towards the end of a topic, or if I was introducing a topic, we'd have a, a start together. Mm. But other than that, it was all very calm, very relaxed. Um, they'd put their hand up and I'd trot over and mm. help them. And I used to say to them, well, come on, tell me what you don't understand. And I think it was... I was being a facilitator mm. much more than a teacher because all the stuff was there. Yes. We'd sequenced it so that we got progression mm. in the learning. Mm. And um, the kids seemed to quite like that. But I remember an inspector coming in one day and asking me about this and he didn't seem impressed at all. Not, not with the amount of work that was going on, but he, he was asking challenging questions about whether I thought um, the children were learning or you know, weren't they missing out on having whole class teaching? Mm. And I said, absolutely not. Um, it was very hard work, mm. because instead of teaching one thing to the whole class once, I was having to teach some things 30 times. Yes. And, and I, I could see mm. how some of the children made amazing process, m progress. Mm when uh, I think probably they wouldn't have. They, they might have been like me in my year two class, mm. when, in my grammar school, being average in a B stream mm. and missing the main points of the learning. Because it's been aimed at the middle, because mid, mid, mid range. Because yes. it's aimed at the middle range. Mm. And there were extension bits every now and again. So if, if we got fast workers in the topic books, they'd do the extensions. It was fantastic. Mm. 
It sounds a lot like the old smile maps in, 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 in London. Well, uh, which was well, there was a number of schemes. Well, maps is very SMP. Uh, and yes, yes. Yeah. But then uh, with with maps, they would, uh, with with the spiral maps, there would lots of investigations and enrichment activities mm. that could be brought in, and and, and sometimes group activities as, as well together, working together. Yeah, it was interesting because when I was in my, I suppose I was doing observations mm. somewhere um, in the training. I um, I'd seen children working on math schemes and and English schemes and there were boxes and they used to finish one card and come and get another yeah. card mm. and that wasn't the same somehow I don't no. know whether it was because it was a different topic yeah but, or maybe it was that just was, a, was a different topic. I think it was because of the engagement between me as the teacher in the science and how the teacher was operating in the in the class in the middle school, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure exactly, but it wasn't. Some teachers with the maths stuff would say that they would just ended up being some sort of manager of resources. Absolutely. And and and, 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 de and they felt uh, demeaned by that or unskilled by that. But what, yeah. what were you saying? You could find a time when when a child was uh, finding it difficult, or you, you could look at the right time to intervene and do the teaching one to one then. Absolutely, and that's what I did. And I used to um, just scan the class, and mm. as I tell my students now, scan the class, see what they're doing. If they look as if they're puzzled, go and see what's happening. And that's exactly what I did. 